Good morning. Does anyone know what today is? Perfect. We got three or four people that are keeping up with the days of the week. Um, <laughs> Uh, today is Kevin and Imelda's last Sunday here at Jesus Community Church for a time. We fully expect that they'll at least come back on furlough, come visit, keep us updated. Um, Kevin is going to come up this morning and share just whatever God has laid on his heart. I've told him to take as much or as little time as he needs. So um, we're going to hear from Kevin this morning. And then after service, we're going to do the, the farewell fiesta for the McDaniel family. Um, does anybody happen to know where the card is? We have the card. Okay. If you have not signed the card, please find it and sign it. Um, right now, Dennis and Jeannie have it, so that would be the first place to look. Um, <clears throat> so at this point, I am going to turn the service over to Kevin and... Just share whatever got to put on your heart. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I guess I could have gotten this a little bit prepared earlier, but um, we're so blessed by you guys. I just want to start off by saying that um, this is been our favorite church we've ever spent any time in. It's just felt like really like home and like this is where God wanted us for a long time. So thank you guys. Thank everybody for the part you played in that. Um, <clears throat> you know, Melda and I and our family going to Mexico to be missionaries, <clears throat> we've always felt from the beginning of this journey that it's very important that the people that are supporting you and the people that are from your sending body be as much a part of it as possible. Um, and so I hope that you guys have felt that and that you guys continue to feel that um, and look at our updates and, and make yourselves aware of what we're doing or what God's doing down there through us um, because it's so important that we have that unity because um, we're not leaving you guys. We're being sent out by you guys, you know. Um, and so, I, I was reading, actually last night, Glenn texted me in the evening and said that he would like me to share however much God wanted me to share. And so, I was just praying and, and reading and came across a passage that I've read a lot of times and it just seemed to fit um, with us leaving and what we're doing and, and kind of an example of, I hate this thing, it just keeps sliding down. Um, just an example of... Uh, what we're supposed to do as a Christian body a little bit. So um, if you guys could get your Bibles out and, and turn to Philippians, First Philippians, uh, <laughs> chapter 2. going to start reading it and just going through it a little bit and kind of breaking it down, um, what, what, what God kind of showed me to out of it last night. Um, it says in verse 1, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from His love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love being one in spirit and purpose. And that's exactly what I'm talking about. We're one in, in, in the purpose of sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. That is our goal. Our goal, like Glenn said earlier, is to glorify God. God gets all the glory. Um, but we get to participate, and that's what's awesome. And that's that. when he said that this morning, I was like, oh man, that's exactly what I was going to say. But he beat me to it, so... Um, thanks, Glenn. No problem. <laughs> but... Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's all about God. It's all about the glory to God. Um, and we, 
as the body of Christ, need to be like-minded in that, in that purpose that goal, and that goal is to glorify God however he wants us to do it. We each, as we know, have our role. That's kind of why the example of a body, um, each has our part, and each plays a part. Though, though it be different in action and in, in, in the way it looks, it, it all goes to the same exact purpose, and that's to glorify God. Um, <clears throat> moving on uh, into verse 3. Um, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. But in humility, consider others better than yourselves. I don't know about all of you guys. Uh, probably most of you guys are like me. Um, and that really is a problem. I know uh, it's a human condition, and it's also hugely an American condition. Um, it's all about me. It's all about what I can do and, and the great awesome things that I do. Um, even even go, comes into the church, just proclaiming the great works that they do for people and and you know I, I was I'm not gonna say any names but there was someone from another church recently that I was talking to and he was going on and on about these awesome things their church was doing and he wasn't saying anything about how the Lord was moving he wasn't saying anything about the Spirit of God or Christ or anything about glorifying God all he was saying was we have helped these many people and he had numbers you know. You know, we've given meals to 452 people, and we've, you know, those are great, wonderful things. You know, helping people, we're supposed to do that, you know. But we got to keep in mind, again, it's not about ourselves. It's not about the amount of great, good, awesome things that we've done. It's about how much God is glorified, you know. And uh, so it, it comes back to that being humil being, how do you say that? Being humble, being humility. I don't know. Um, but, uh, and it's funny, English is my first and best language. <laughs> um, but yeah, don't do anything out of selfish ambition. So don't do anything to puff yourself up, or even thinking you're going to have it better with God because you're doing these awesome things. Because it's not about that. It's about, there's a, something I say to the youth group kids. Is that, can any of you say what it is? It's not about um, what you see on the outside or the things that you do. What is it about? Condition. The heart condition. We say I say that all the time because that's really the only thing that matters. Because God looks to the heart. Um, <clears throat> First Samuel sixteen seven uh, says that the Lord sees not as a man sees. Man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Um, your attitude comes from your heart. Um, the way that you feel comes from what's inside. You know. Um, the, it says, I can't remember where it is in the Psalms maybe, it says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Um, so what's inside comes out. And so that, that's very revealing about who we are and how we are, you know. Um, so, uh, you know, they always say, watch what you say and be careful what you say and do. That's true, but more importantly, look to what's inside, you know. Look to what's inside of you. Um, verse 4 here says, each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. And that goes along with the humility and considering others better than yourself, you know. Putting others first rather than yourself. Um, and this is nothing new, I'm telling you guys. It's just so important to refresh it and keep it and think about it because we have that tendency to just keep drifting back into your own little selfish world, you know. And uh, it's not... <coughs> Well, we'll go on verse 5. Speaking of attitude and speaking of where that attitude comes from, from the heart, um, we all know exactly the only thing that can actually change that attitude and change that heart is Jesus, right? And it says in verse 5, um, your attitude should be the same as that of Jesus, that of Christ Jesus. Um, and then it goes on to kind of give a little insight into that which we're supposed to em emulate. Um, Jesus. So, so let's just read this. I'm going to read through this for, through verse 11 here. Um, just think about um, these qualities, this attitude, this heart condition, and the way that Jesus acted. Um, and think about the ways that we can emulate that and how different it is from our natural tendencies as human beings. Um, so let's just read this together. 
It says, um, I'll start again in verse 5. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even the death of on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. We tend to uh, maybe not say it out loud with our mouths or even consciously think it, but we act like we're equal to God. Um, I was just talking to my brother Dave here this morning about that, um, about how our natural tendency is to go for it and try and do it. When it doesn't work out, then we pray and ask God to help us. You know, um, How much easier it would be and how much better for us if we went from the very beginning without trying in our own strength but ask God, how can we join in this with you instead of just doing it and then trying to see if God will help us, you know? Um, we were, I was reading a, a book, actually, that Dave gave me. Uh, it's the autobiography of George Mueller. Um, and that was just one of the, I would call him a great hero of faith um, from, from recent history. Uh, recent is 1820s or something like that? Something like that, yeah. Um, so fairly recent, um, but just the, if you ever get a chance to read that book, it's very, very convicting in one ta- on one hand, and then just uplifting on the other hand, showing how God can move and how God can can uh, provide for us if we go to Him first, um, and and avoid the struggle of of trying to fight it out and hash it out in our flesh first, but go to God, you know. So. It's really awesome. I recommend that book. All right, that wasn't in my notes, but uh, we'll go back to my notes here. <laughs> uh, let's see. So, um, back in verse 12, he reiterates um, basically the humility. He says, Therefore, my dear friends, that you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. So instead of considering equality with God, or thinking you're awesome and all that, and you can do it without God, um, we need to get back to that fear and trembling part, where we're so humbled before the Lord because we're so awed by His majesty and how awesome He is, um, and He's powerful, you know? He is a God of, of, of vengeance, and you know, even though, no matter how much He loves us, no matter how awesome God of love He is, we tend to have that for, forget that vengeance side, that if you don't follow Christ, in the end, you're going to realize, oh, it's not all lovey-dovey, gooey-gooey. God does have the vengeful side. God says, if you don't obey my commandments, there's going to be judgment, you know? Um, and we've gotten, I think, too far away from the hellfire and brimstone preaching, you know, um, and, and thinking about our faith. Um, but it says here in that verse 12, but to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. Um, and I just think that's really, really, really important to keep in our mind um, and to incorporate into our prayer life and our attitude when we approach the throne of God, you know. <clears throat> so verse 13, um, For it is God who works in you to will and to act according to his good purpose. There it is again. It goes right back to God. It's about God. It's not us. It's God in you. It's God that's doing the purpose, doing the things, doing the actions. Um, whether you're talking to your neighbor about Jesus, you got to be or about anything. You got to be open to, to that opportunity and make that opportunity to talk about Jesus because God tells us He commands us to go and preach the gospel. He commands us in multiple places in the Bible to share that. Um, and we're going to talk about that a little bit further down here, but um, keeping that attitude of Christ-likeness 
and remembering, like it says here in verse 13, it's God who works in you um, to will and to act according to his good purpose. Um, and I'm stressing the evangelism part uh, because that is one of another thing that's hard for Christians to do today, it seems. Um, people just don't share the gospel. I mean, and I, I think I've shared this before, but I've, I believe for most of my Christian life that if I follow Christ and be a Christian, fervent, whatever, you know, do the right things, my light's going to shine out of me, and then people are going to ask me what's different about me, or ask me, you know, whatever. And I took that verse to heart, you know, the be ready always to give an answer for the hope that is in you. Um, I, I was ready, you know. Um, but no one ever asked me, you know. It just didn't. And I, I, I was ready. I wanted to share. But I, I wasn't going out and pursuing people, you know. Um, and so I, I, I've come to the conclusion um, in recent years that it's about sharing that. When he says go into the world and preach the gospel multiple times in here, or in here I should say, this is my notes. Um, uh, he's saying wherever you are, make that effort. Don't wait for the opportunities to hopefully come along. Pray for God to show you how you can make the opportunities, you know. If God brings someone into your path, a, a human being to talk to, that's an opportunity, you know. You don't have to sit there and wait for them to ask, you know. Um, you've probably heard this before, and I, I'll just say it again really quick, but <laughs> it's that example of, of the person that has the cure for cancer, right? You see all these people here dying of cancer, walking by, you're talking to them, whatever. Well, they never asked me for the cure. Well, they probably didn't know you had it, you know? <laughs> Anybody would say you're an idiot because you did not go and share this. You didn't out, shout it from the rooftops. Hey, I got the cure for cancer. Come on, everybody. Let's everybody get in here and get fixed up, you know? Well, it's the same thing with, with the gospel. We have the cure for everything. And yet we just, well, hopefully someone will ask me about it, you know? And, and, and it's, I've just been really greatly convicted of that, and I think that that's kind of what started a few years ago, started me on the path towards what God wanted us to do, this, this moving out and going to another country, you know, um, <clears throat> to share the gospel. And let's move on, because I like this really, this other part here. Um, okay, verse 14 is where we're at. Um, it says, do everything without complaining or arguing. That's, that's, that's tough. I complain all the time. Um, I argue yes, less than I used to, but I still argue. Because um, I always want to be right. I mean, I usually am, but... Um, <laughs> no, um, I, I just, I do. I, I want to be right. You know, I don't want someone else to prove a point to me, because I want to be right, so I'm going to argue the point, you know. Um, and God has been teaching me, and I'm sure he's got a long ways to go, but to be a little more, be more humble about it, you know. I'm not always right. And even if I am right, why do I need to argue it with someone else, you know? That's right. it's, it's not going to help anything, especially if they have a strong opinion opposite me. Chances are I'm not going to change their opinion. I'm just going to hurt their feelings or make them mad, you know. Um, so that's why I think it's important not to argue. That's why he puts it in here. And uh, complaining, of course, that's a big one for... A lot of people, we all complain on some level or another. Whether it's complaining to each other or about each other or complaining to God or about God or whatever it is. Just stop. You know? Take it to God. Let Him cover it. But stop complaining and arguing. Because, or, or so that, I guess it says in 4, 15. So, so let me go back. Do everything without complaining or arguing so that you may become blameless and pure. Children of God, without fault, in a crooked and depraved generation. So learning to stop complaining and learning to stop arguing, says right here, are basically steps to becoming pure and blameless. 
So you need to take that action of consciously not arguing, consciously not complaining. That's a start towards blamelessness and purity. That's the way I read it. And then this other part that really stood out to me, um, and it goes along with the evangelism thing too. Um, okay, so I'm going to read again from 14. Do everything without complaining or arguing so that you may become blameless and pure. Children of God without fault in a crooked and depraved generation in which you shine like stars in the universe. I absolutely love the way Paul does these like analogies from the real world we live in, you know, because it, it, it puts a picture in your mind and, and makes it make sense, you know. Because um, what do you think of? You think of this universe, the vast black sky, and then the stars, they stand out, they shine out, like it says here. I mean, just like this brilliant pinpoint of light um, that has to travel a gajillion miles. I'm not very versed on all that stuff, how many light years and all that it takes, but, but uh, it's what? It's a gajillion miles. It's a gajillion? Oh, thank you. I wasn't sure. Um, but uh, that's the way we're supposed to be. And we can only really do that and only really be that if we're doing these other things, like it says here, and becoming pure and blameless, you know? We can try to shine all we want in our own strength, but it's gonna fail. Because you can fool some of the people all of the time, and all of the people some of the time, and then I change it a little bit here, you can't fool God any of the time, you know? People, people, you, oftentimes, and usually, eventually, it comes to light in front of people, you know, when you're, not truly <clears throat> having Christ's light shining out of you. You can fake it really good to people. You know, I've, I've known and met and heard of so many different examples of that and even practiced that in my own life. I was a very good Christian, but I didn't have that intimate relationship with God. I didn't have that light of Christ shining inside of me, you know. Um, but I knew how to fake it really well, being raised in a Christian home. Um, but I've always asked, and I've asked the youth group for this a lot too, what is the point of faking it with God, you know? God knows. God knows right from the very beginning. He knows, He knew you before you, before you were formed in your mother's womb. I knew you, it says. And uh, if you're putting on this bright show of all these good things that it mentions here, you know, putting others first and doing these good works and stuff, those are all well and great and good and helpful to people. They really are. And, 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 but non-Christians do that stuff. There's humanitarian people all over the world that don't know Jesus, that do great and wonderful things. And that's great. I would never put that down. But when it comes to the end, when it comes to the time for your reward, so to speak, um, and God says, I didn't know. I, I never knew you. Who are you? Like, well, God, I did... Fed five billion people in your name. I freed slaves and prisoners. I did all this other stuff. Um, I put others before myself, you know. Um, but if, if you don't have that <coughs> starting, that brilliant light of Jesus Christ starting right here inside of you to shine out, like it says there in 15, um, then God's going to say he never knew you, you know. And that's, well, the worst thing that could happen, basically. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read the starting verse 14 again just because it kind of sounds better and makes more sense altogether. But I'm going to uh, go through part of 16 as well. Um, so do everything without complaining or arguing so that you may become blameless and pure children of God without fault in a crooked and depraved generation in which you shine like stars in the universe. And I like how it says it here, as you hold out the word of life. Now, some versions say hold on to the word of life and some other variations. I really, really like the way it says it in the NIV as you hold out the word of life. Um, the word of life, well, we all know what that is. I don't really have to explain that. The word of life is the gospel. The word of life is Jesus Christ. The word of life is this thing that we're supposed to be sharing with the world. Um, so hold out the word of life, the way it words it in here, makes me think of a couple of different things. One, a standard, you know, like the, the army's battle flag. 
this is the word of life. <clears throat> this is what we represent. This is what is representing us. This is, you know, hold out that word of life. And then the other side of it is as our shield, you know, holding out that word of life. God protects us. God, everything is about Jesus and we can kind of fade into the background and let, let Jesus be up there and take the brunt of everything, you know. Um, and then the other one, too, that I thought of with this um, holding out the word of life is we're holding out hope. We're offering hope, you know. It's hope and comfort for people. You know, I've talked to a lot of people, um, non-Christian people, and there's a lot of them that are all, you know, everything's hunky-dory and cool and everything is awesome when you're part of a team. Sorry. Um, but it's uh, always such a show, you know, because I've, I've seen these same people when they're broken, when they finally realize by circumstances or by someone dying or something happening to them personally or whatever it is, um, they realize that they stand for nothing. And the things that they thought they stood for don't really count for anything, you know? Um, and there's only one thing that means anything. That's it, one thing in this entire life. And that's Jesus, you know? That's the only thing that can bring true meaning to your life can bring true contentment, true hope. Um, we have a hope. And uh, I, I liked what, what Steve prayed here at the end, talking about the, that hope that we have. It's, it's something that we, as Christians, got to be offering to people. we got to be putting it out there. There's so many people that need it. You know? So, first... Get your own house in order. Clean up what's going on in here. Get yourself right with God. Because um, if you don't do that first, everything else doesn't make any difference. You know. Um, so get yourself straightened up and right with God. Get start doing the things that He commands here. Putting other things, others before yourself. Uh, you know, thinking of others first. Doing acts of service for other people. Um, all that stuff that it talks about here, start practicing that in your life. Um, and then the light of Jesus starts shining out of you more and more because you start changing your attitude when you start physically humbling yourself and mentally humbling yourself um, to that level of being a servant to other people. Um, that's when Jesus really starts to shine out of you. That's when Jesus says, okay, here's my opportunity. You know? And I may, the, the, one more thing I'm going to share about... Um, and I may have shared this here before, I don't know, I've spoken in a number of churches over the last year, so I don't know. But when, when someone finally does that, when someone finally gets, lets go of everything of their self, says, God, I'm going to give you the control. I surrender all. They fall on their knees and on their face before God and say, less of me, in fact, nothing of me, more of you, all of you. You know, When they finally do that, and they... <clears throat> completely surrender to God and say, God, everything is yours. Do with you what you, what you will. I will do whatever you tell me to do. Um, I get this, this vision of God up in heaven. He's looking down. He's hearing this guy totally surrendering to him, or girl, sorry, um, hearing this, this Christian surrender to him. And I just get this, this mental image of him get this humongous smile on his face, like rolling up his sleeves and going, hey guys, check this out, this is gonna be awesome. You know, because now you f I finally have this guy who's ready to do my will um, and my purpose. And, and I just can't think of much that brings him greater joy, you know, um, than, than someone who finally reaches that point of, of surrendering and finally untying God's hands, if you will, and letting him do the work, you know. So, that is, that is what God laid on my heart to share with you guys, um, and that's what's on our hearts, and that's the attitude that we want to have going out as missionaries from you guys and with you guys. Um, and so we would very much solicit your prayers on that.
um, that we can do that continually. Um, and by that I mean surrender ourselves and put God first and do His will, accomplish His purposes. Because um, as we've read here, it's all in vain if we don't, you know. Um, it says in, I'm going to read one more thing I have here. Um, yeah, Psalm 127 one says, Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain to build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. Um, we don't want that to be us, you know. We don't want to build up this great house of awesomeness that we built um, because it's going to fall or fail or have no impact, you know. We want it to be for God, all about God and by God. So we pray for, we ask you to pray for us in that way. We also commit to pray for all of you guys too because I want to see you guys even grow and go out more and, and make those opportunities to talk to people about Jesus, you know. Um, so, um, Glenn asked me to share a little bit about our, our immediate plans moving forward. Um, we are... Um, we're going to... <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to have to stop this to make you feel awkward. But, um, <clears throat> we're Lord willing, if it's pleasing to Him, um, that we are going to be leaving on Thursday, this Thursday, like four days from now. That's coming close. <laughs> um, you know, people have asked me a bunch of times, are you nervous? You know, are you getting nervous? Are you getting... Yeah, I'm not really nervous about going down and being a missionary because I, I really have surrendered that to God and, and, and I know that it's His, uh, his work and, and He's going to do with us what He wills. Um, the thing that I've been most nervous about the last week or so has been, okay, now what am I going to discover that I've forgotten that I should have taken care of three weeks ago? <laughs> you know what I mean? I found one thing, um, but it's not a real big deal and we'll get it taken care of. But, but yeah, it's just kind of, that's the only real nervousness that I've felt so far um, this week. But anyway, so leaving uh, the 30th, driving to Portland. Because we have family over there that we haven't seen in a long time. Actually, they've never met our kids. Um, my aunt and uncle. And they, uh, we're going to go stay there that night. The next day, we're going to get up in the morning and go to the zoo, take the kids to the zoo. Uh, just kind of have some family time with them. I think my sister might drive up from Eugene with some of her kids. Um, and, and just hang out at the zoo together. Um, and then uh, Saturday, well, Friday night, I think we'll drive down to Eugene after the zoo, because um, that's where my sister lives and my brother lives and, and my brother-in-law. And my sister and brother-in-law have seven kids, um, so that's always a good time. But uh, we're just going to hang out with them. Some friends of ours that I've talked about before, um, I mentioned the Fish and Mission Adventures. Um, near Topeak. It's a, it's a big humongous reservoir that, that was created a number of years ago and it's uh, one of the premier bass fishing spots in Mexico um, and they have this bass fishing camp if you will um, and that's their ministry is people come in and, and uh, pay for a package of bass fishing and meals and lodging and all that stuff and then their commitment is everything above uh, cost goes directly to support the orphanage, Casa de Niños, where we're going to work. Mm -hmm. So it's a really, really neat ministry that they've got going. They've been building it up for the last 10 years, um, and now it's finally kind of really got lodging and, and is actually a viable place to, to start bringing in a good amount of money for the orphanage. So it's really a, a really neat thing. They are six months here and six months there. Um, they live in, in Oregon, near Eugene and Paloma. Anyway, they're gonna actually come down to my sister's house too on Saturday and just kind of fellowship with us and hang out with us. Um, then Sunday we're having church at my sister's church. We went and spoke there, um, shared shared the, the God's mission on uh, in March, I think it was, and they were really excited for us and, and they're actually, I think they're going to put together a little box of stuff for us to take down to the orphanage and, and uh, anyway, they're excited to have us there. So we're going to go fellowship at their church and then so um, three of my aunts are coming in from out of town that I haven't seen for years. Um, and they're going to come in and we're going to have a little mini family reunion kind of thing um, after church. Then the next morning, Monday morning, the 4th, um, we're going to drive down to Manteca, California, um, which is, I think it's kind of directly east of San Francisco almost um, on I-5. 
Uh, that's where my uncle lives, who I haven't seen for 21 years, I don't think. But we're going to stay with him over the night. Um, and then we're going to drive, um, Lord willing, on the Tuesday the 5th to San Diego area um, and stay a night with the McCormicks, um, Kelly and Michelle, former pastors of this church. Um, so we're really excited about seeing them, and they seem really excited to see us too, um, have a little bit of time of fellowship. Um, and then this is where it gets a little hazy uh, as far as our itinerary. We've been assured by the customs broker at the border that he can get us through the border really quickly. He's going to have everything lined out, all the paperwork ready for us. We're just going to boom, slam, bam, boom, shoot, and we're through the border. If that is the case, we will travel from San Diego up to Nogales or across to Nogales, Arizona, um, which is where we're going to cross, and then head south on the toll roads um, and drive about six or seven hours into Mexico. Um, if, however, he speaks an error or something comes up and, and we're not able to get through the, the process of our paperwork and stuff until late, then we're not going to leave you know, late afternoon and go into, into Mexico because we don't want to stay very close to the border because it's more dangerous there um, and neither do we want to drive at night in Mexico. Um, so that's kind of where we're at. We may have to spend the night in Nogales, Arizona. Um, We'd, we'd really like to just get there, pass through, go, um, spend one night in Obregon, Ciudad Obregon, um, which is about, like I said, about seven hours-ish from the border. Um, the nice thing, the reason we picked that city is because it has it's a pretty relatively safe city, um, not a lot of violence going on there. There's the motels that we've picked out for, um, have security and security parking for the trailer and truck and everything, so that's kind of one of the reasons we picked that. Um, and then it's only about 10 hours, 10 to 11 hours from Obregon down to Topeak, and we can haul that in one day and get there and be done with it. So um, that's kind of our schedule. Um, our schedule of, or I guess it would be called an itinerary maybe. Anybody help me out? Mm -hmm. Is that what you call it? Okay. <laughs> um, I think that's all I had. Yeah, so one other thing I wanted to ha uh, ask you guys to be in prayer about for us is, um, as you know and as we've said, we want to be completely and 100% open to God's will, right? We want our work not to be our work, but to be His work, you know, um, to will and to do His purpose, as it said there in verse 15 of Philippians chapter 2. Um, that being said, from the very get-go, we, we have not committed to anyone saying, yes, we will come and work for you for a year or you know anything like that. Um, we're committed to, to take part in the casa, and the or that's what we call it, the orphanage, the casa de niños. Um, we, we feel that we're supposed to be involved in that somehow, um, but we, we told them, and, and they're in agreement with us too, um, that, that we don't want to make any bold commitments or say, this is what we're going to do when we get there, this is, you know... We want to leave it open to God's working. Um, so, I don't know, I guess either God's kind of been telling people or maybe word got around or something that there's some missionaries coming down that don't have any commitments. I don't know. But uh, we've been approached by a couple of other ministries um, in the last couple months. One of them was just last week. The, the Fish and Mission Adventure guy um, called me up and says, Hey, uh, I don't know if God's ever laid anything on your heart about possibly working with us. Um, he said, but we've been praying and praying for someone to come and come alongside us and eventually take over our ministry. Um, and uh, he says, so every time we've been praying in the last year, you guys have come to mind. And uh, he said, you guys didn't, re you know, you, know, you really, really fit the criteria, criteria that we had kind of for, for people that would take over in so many ways. Uh, the only thing that was lacking was, as he said, we, we really felt that it was going to be like a kid that grew up in the orphanage that was going to take over. And, and, uh, and then he's like, just the other day I was thinking, well, wait a minute. Hamelda's a casa kid. <laughs> she grew up in the orphanage, you know. And he says, so you guys, as far as we're concerned, you fit the bill 100%. I, I don't feel one way or the other about it, personally. I haven't felt, have a word from God on it. But it's an opportunity that's out there that we need to pray about, you know, because they feel strongly that, that this is what, possibly something from God 
we're, we're 100% open to it because like I said, we want to do what God's will is. So pray for us that we can discern God's will um, and, and act on it and, and choose wisely so that we can glorify and honor Him uh, with our lives and with our time down there. Um, then the only other thing, oh yeah, there's another, another ministry that actually from here that contacted me recently and uh, then he contacted me again two weeks ago and said he, he'd really like me to, like us to consider being part of their mission or at least pray about it or whatever. Um, they're a long ways away though, they're down closer to Mexico City um, in Puebla and uh, they have kind of a basically a ready-made ready ministry waiting for some missionaries because um, their missionaries retired. Anyway, so there's just a lot of a lot of opportunity out there. There's a lot of need for, for people that are willing to do what God wants them to do. Um, so it's, it's there's definitely things I'd rather do and things I'd rather not do, um, but I want it to be what God wants. So um, I guess this is kind of your last opportunity now and then during the fellowship meal and stuff to ask us questions. Um, What's the name of this? Tepic, T E P I C. Thank you. Yep. Awesome. That means we've talked to everybody and shared enough, and everybody knows what's going on. That's good. Um, remember, there are our picture, prayer reminder, whatever cards you want to call them. Um, we have a started when we first start decided that. Yes, this is what God has for us, and we started telling people about it and sharing about it. Um, we started a blog, which is a, basically an online newsletter kind of thing, um, so that people can just go in and read what's going on with us, you know, and that's something that we've updated periodically, sometimes once a month, sometimes a few months in between, but um, that's one of the ways that we're going to communicate with, with our friends and family and prayer warriors and supporters. Um, so please grab one of those cards. On the back of it, it gives the web site address um, follow us on that you know I think you can even I think you can even like subscribe to the blog so that every time we post it emails you another thing you can do is to make sure you're getting it is is just send us your email because I have this big list of people that every time I put it I, I email it to a whole bunch of people um, so we'd be happy to send it to you every time we're gonna do that faithfully I promise because uh, we've seen in a lot of missionaries that don't do that you know I've talked to a, almost every church that we went to, talking to the pastors and talking to different leaders in the church, that was a huge complaint that they had. They said, so many missionaries are all gung-ho to go, and then you hear from them faithfully for a little while, and then you don't hear from them for a couple months, and then it's three months, and then it's six months, and, you know, and, and so on and so forth, because they get busy with their things. and, and uh, So we're, we're committed to being, it's, it's never been easier, you know, to, to get information out. Um, we're going to have internet. We're not in a little grass hut in the savannah, you know. I mean, we do have, we will have internet access, um, so we can definitely contact you. If you want to talk to us face to face, we'll have Skype, we'll have, I'll we'll be on Facebook, you know, all that stuff. So we definitely are committed to keeping you guys in the loop and keeping you involved because we don't want you to forget about praying for us. We want to be in your face with it a little bit more so that, so that you can be supporting us in that way. That, so. Any questions at all? All right, I will turn it back over to Glenn. 